International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. The citizens of San Francisco are saying enough is enough. And so today they're gathering to make sure that neighbors will not be put out on the street. Fight on! Hang in there! Yes. Victory's going to be ours! Yes. Because we have got a team to take back that which belongs to us. Amen. Yes. We cross one river, as I said in my remarks, but we got other rivers to cross. First river we crossed was to stop the sale. Now we got to have a permanent injunction that will put this development back in the hands of the original developers, sponsors, Third Baptist Church. And I feel that with Supervisor Breed, Mayor Brown, Louise Rennie, John Holzman, the residents, and everybody who's gathered here, we got a movement going. And my chairman of our trustee ministry, Brother Preston Turner, has been on the case, and with his intestinal fortitude to sign this complaint is all we needed to cross the other rivers. Rail Ground got us over the first one when he hooked up with us and inspired this team. And now we're going to go over because Brother Turner has signed the complaint and Third Baptist Church is behind him. And we're going to go forward and fight until this development is kept in the hands of those four fathers and four mothers who gave us Frederick Dudley Hayne that was originally known as Third Baptist Gardens. Thank you, sir. Okay. I was just wondering, you've been uh, a servant of this city for so many years in so many ways, and I know you're in private practice now, but have you ever seen anything like what is going on now in terms of housing in San Francisco? I absolutely have never seen anything like this. It's like a tsunami hitting the city. And I was interested in reading in a newspaper today where everybody is blaming the law for evictions. And I would say it's not the law, it's greedy people misusing the law. But to answer your precise question, I have never seen as much effort and really overwhelming effort to try to get poor people out of their homes. It's a disgrace and as I think you can see by the outpouring today, uh, other people throughout the city are saying, wait a second, this isn't right to kick seniors and families and young people and children out of their homes where they've lived so long. In terms of having the first success today, in terms of stopping that sale that was expected on Thursday, what do you think um, will be the uh, response? Is it going to be an uphill battle? What do the people of Frederick Haynes, uh, Frederick Douglass Haynes Gardens have to expect? Well, I think, first of all, the, the first step is that the tenants literally just found out about this. Literally just found out. Uh, nobody Nobody had consulted them, nobody had told them about this, so they were as surprised as we were to find out uh, about this. I mean, obviously what the people who want to buy this property were trying to do is do it by stealth, hoping nobody would hear about it or find out about it, and then would all just go quietly into the night, but that's not going to happen. So everybody is going to have to pool together and 
And as Reverend Brown said, we're a team here, and it's going to be always a team effort. Tenants, community people, lawyers all working together. One of the things you said, uh, Ms. Rennie, is that this is, you believe, the, just the tip of the iceberg. So do you think upon finding out what's happening with this particular project, we're going to see that there have been other things happening as well as people start going through the documentation? I, I suspect that we're going to find a pattern of trying to go after poor people's homes, try to fix them up, and turn them into wealthy people's homes. I think we've already seen other places in the city where neighborhoods have been taken over. There are efforts being made certainly in other communities. South of Market, for example, has a huge battle on their hands now. And I think it's all people that are trying to overcome all of us who really care. Well, thank you very much for your time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I think you've asked all the questions. Well, I, would, I would just say that I think it is wonderful to see as many people here and as diverse a community coming all together to say, wait a second, we don't want those 104 families in the Western Edition tossed out. That, I think, is wonderful. Thank you for your vigilance and your continued hot, hard work, especially on such a hot day, although it is a hot subject as far as housing. Thank you very much. John, could you tell us what was achieved today? Well, today we had a, a great victory in that we stopped the sale of this property, which was going to possibly happen as soon as this coming Thursday, the day after today, tomorrow. Um, so we have a great temporary victory here, uh, but we're not done. Because uh, the issue is, we still have a nonprofit that is apparently not a responsible steward of this property, uh, and we still have property that needs to be rehabilitated responsibly, uh, and we still have tenants that we need to have assurance will be there for the next 30 or 40 years. So, uh, part of the process uh, with the accountability that needs to be made is um, the stewardship on the part of the city, do you believe, or other nonprofits to make it happen? Or what What's going to make this the best scenario, and what is that scenario for these families? Well, I'll tell you, now I'm, I'm biased, bear in mind, because I represent the church, but, but from my perspective, the church is a, an excellent steward and has been trying and fighting very hard to deal with the fact that the, this nonprofit has thrown out their leadership from the nonprofit. So from my perspective, you know, Reverend Brown clearly has the interests of the tenants at heart. Uh, and I think that it's going to be critical that we get that nonprofit back under the oversight of, of, of the church. Wonderful. Anything, any other points or any key things uh, that the public needs to know about in this, uh, about this whole process? Well, what's very scary is this is not the only uh, development of its type in the Western Edition. There, we know of at least four others that were created by churches uh, and other nonprofits uh, that are now getting to the end of their leases with HUD, their, I'm sorry, their mortgages with HUD. And so the result is that we're going to see more of this where people are trying to get out from under, under affordability requirements. And so, you know, what we need to do is make sure we organize all of those folks because you're talking, you know, many, many hundreds of families in the Western Edition who are in danger as a result of this. I think, again, though, that the issue is, you know, certainly the city has been very, very helpful, uh, but I think we need to be working with HUD. Uh, I think we need to be working with the Attorney General's office to make sure that these nonprofits are, are run properly and that there's no self-dealing. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to work with the community so they know what's going on because, you, as you can see from what's happened here, people in the community are very scared. And I think the key operative word you use is self-dealing, that that has to be protected from. That's right, and I mean I'm learning about this because this is not this is not my area of law. I took this case because Mayor Brown. I used to work for Mayor Brown, and I and Mayor Brown asked me to take it, so I took it. Um, but 
you know, one of the things I'm learning about nonprofits is there are many, many ways of self-dealing in nonprofits that are technically legal, um, but that are very problematic. Nonprofits can pay uh, their uh, their relatives and their friends and what have you salaries, uh, and you know, so money can go in a lot of different ways. There can be agreements with developers, as we've seen here. There can be sales, all of these things, and and while the nonprofit laws are designed to protect against that money essentially being siphoned off, the reality is those protections are very porous. All right, thank you very much. Dr. McRae, you're with Tabernacle and you um, have been watching the housing market for quite some time. What is your take on what's going on with this situation? San Francisco is an extremely valuable place. The uh, property values are skyrocketing. And our parents, our mothers and fathers who came here 40s, they, they, they struggled to get a place here, land, employment, and the pursuit of happiness. And at this point, the, 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 the market is driving all institutions to want what now African American people have in San Francisco. And, and we have to be smart and wise to, to respond to the assault and decide that we want to stay and we want to fight the battle to stay. Now do you think that um, basically this is impacting the churches as well since they're major landowners? Uh, certainly. It's, it's impacting the, the churches. Uh, one, one of the things we we're working with as Tabernacles to try to work with local congregations to be aware of what it is they hold as stewards in terms of properties in, in urban areas. But, but what I would want to say is, is that as we watch this play out and our churches, urban churches, are involved, we need to be very careful that we see there are different types of local congregations. There are locally autonomous local churches, and then there are churches that are part of connections. Churches that are locally autonomous, it is that congregation that controls its, e its church life, its social life, its ministry life. Right there, that pastor, that congregation. But connectional churches are a part of a broader church particularly those of us who are part of the United Methodist Church. Our center is not in the local parish. Our center is at the conference headquarters. And we must be very careful to watch what programs conference headquarters are putting in place regarding the properties held in trust by their local congregations. Do you have any advice for um, people of San Francisco or churches or anything or any just information my that needs advice, to be added? My advice is seek the welfare of the city. That's my advice. If we can stay focused on what is for the welfare of the city. What kind of city do we want? Do we want a rich, vibrant, diverse city in which all of God's children are, are, are present and, 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 and alive and productive and participatory? If we want that kind of city, then we've got to seek it right here, right now, and all of the transactions and deals that we do as this market presents itself for profit. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Reverend Townsend, you're a resident of the Frederick Douglass Haynes Gardens. Right. How do you feel about what was accomplished today? Well, well, I feel very good about what was accomplished because uh, our, our complex is not going to be sold two days from now. So obviously this is a win. It's not a permanent win. The fight will still continue. We will still have to be vigilant and we'll have to set a plan of action and a solution to our problem for the long term. How did you feel when you had heavy hitters like Louise Rennie and the former mayor of San Francisco, Willie O'Brown Jr., come here to well, support? Well, it was absolutely wonderful, of course, that people are really sometimes, not, not necessarily Mayor Brown, because he's always been there, but others are beginning to really feel like black lives do matter. And they matter not just when the police are killing them, but they matter when you're employing someone and you have that opportunity. They matter in our educational system when you're teaching them. 
they matter in every aspect of our lives, or they should matter, but we know for a fact that in this town they don't always matter. Anything else you'd like to add? I'm, I'm, I, I am just happy. I want to say this for the record because I've been saying it everywhere. Everyone who lives in Fillmore, Bayview, Hunters Point, Mission District, even in Chinatown, you have to be wary and watchful because we live in the first period in history where the wealthy covet the homes and the neighborhoods of the poor. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Thank you, sir. You've been an activist and a resident of San Francisco for a long time. What is your impression of everything that's going on now? Right now uh, in San Francisco today, my heart it saddens me um, where we are as African Americans in this, in this city. Um, I see everyone progressing but us and moving forward. Um, I was with Frederick Douglass Haynes Sr. He was my pastor in the 60s at Third Baptist Church when he ran for the Board of Supervisors. Also, he and the other pastors, many of them are gone, fought redevelopment to gain access to the land here in the Fillmore community. Many of our relatives, my aunt, many persons who are gone now, my mom gave up their property to build these housing developments with the church. I am a certificate holder, an original certificate holder for Freedom West Homes. There's many who you heard today from Haynes Gardens whose grandparents were certificate holders who gave up their houses for that place to be built. And for them to be told when the hourglass is almost at the end that you're going to have to move because a new developer is coming in with less than a month's notice is absurd. It's absurd and it's an act of violence against our community. I'm a community activist with violence prevention and this kind of violence is the worst because this is what causes our young men and women to hit the streets. With this type of activity that they do to our people, it puts another young man on the street to sell drugs to help his mama pay a rent that she cannot afford. You know, so it's a, it's a crime in a city that this, is this rich to allow Twitter and others to come in here and not pay any taxes. But yet, you take families who've been here all their lives, worked hard, pay taxes, and you do this to their grandchildren? It's a disgrace. Shame on you, San Francisco. It's a shame. I'm, I'm very hurt and wounded. Um, that's why I'm here today. And I will continue being here because this is an act of violence. The worst kind of act of violence that anyone could imagine. This is worse than putting a gun to someone's head. When you rip away their very fiber where they live at, their home. Their home. How dare you? Thank you. Anything else you want to add? I just want to add that I'm very appreciative that the word went out that we're that thank god for technology today that we're able to get this out on instagram and facebook and twitter about the urgency of what happened to our neighbors our families in haynes garden you know freedom west where i live at we just finished paying for it and they're not happy about that but it's paid for and we're going to maintain it and we're going to hold on to it and we're going to develop it so that our people will have another place to stay and can come back to the city and hopefully live in one of the new developments that we're about to build you know so I'm grateful for the community coming out I'm grateful for um, Mayor Willie Brown uh, Dr. Amos Brown which, when he brought this to the NAACP meeting I'm, I'm grateful that the community came out and supported this and uh, Supervisor London Bree the president of the board and you know um, we just buried Leroy King you know and when at his services the other day, it hit me. If Lee Ward was alive, if Mary Rogers was alive, they laid down. We saw them. We were young kids. They laid down in front of those bulldozers and said, no, you're not going to tear this down until you give us our fair share. They did get our 40 acres in the mule. You know, and today we're standing here to tell San Francisco we demand and we're going to get our 40 acres in the mule in this city like everybody else. Thank you very much. Thank you. So appreciate your passion and your persistence.
Yes, you know, I, I have to. Uh, our children's lives are, are valuable. Uh, we, we paid a heavy penalty in this city at the shipyard. You know, our people's um, health was, was uh, diminished because of the shipyard and the work that they had to do from cancer and all the other environmental things that happened to us. You know, and now our neighborhoods are diminishing. You know, where is the history of African Americans in this city? Where is it? You want to boast about being a city of diversity? Really? You know, when we're the ones that fought for civil rights, for everybody to have rights? Nobody would have rights here today had it not been for our people and what we've endured. And that's not to say that others didn't help either. But we suffered, died, rape, was raped, lynched, and continue through police brutality to this day to, to be the number one object of harassment and disservice to. And we're, we're saying enough is enough. We're tired, you know. If it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be no gay rights. If it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be any women rights. If it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be any child rights. I mean, a dog and a cat have more rights here in San Francisco than African-American families. And that's a disgrace. We say no more. We will stop the uh, killing and start the healing on every level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. City leaders and community leaders have gathered together to make sure that San Francisco is a place where everyone can live. They have pulled the alarm and they have said, stop in the name of love. Stop in the name of social justice. Stop in the name of all that is righteous to make a difference for all in San Francisco.